What is that and who the hell are you? Are you serious? Dude, I have so much to say about this one. I'm so excited. <laughs> So the Dodge Charger has finally been unveiled in many different forms, I might add. However, not without its critics and backlash, including my friend Cooper, who put it in a very uh, light way, I dare say. <laughs> I'm gonna break down the car, what it's powered by, how this car impacts the car industry in comparison to its rivals, and break down the absolutely hilarious reveal video which I am just so excited to talk about. So right off the rip, what is the Dodge Charger? Well, there's gonna be an EV version, which is very important to this story, which is the one that uh, sounded like a cat. <laughs> meow. meow. Which, yes, that is a fake EV engine sound that's trying to be aggressive. And I've decided that I want to die. Okay. But honestly, I can't help but laugh at their website when you look at the reveal of this car, because when you scroll to the very bottom, there's a photo gallery, and in the photo gallery, it just says, respect it. So right off the bat, they kind of expect a ton of backlash for this car, which is understandable. But it's just funny how they're like, please respect it. <laughs> However, there is not going to be a Dodge V8 in their muscle car. Whoa, this is a huge change. So yeah, the Hellcat power plant is officially gone. We all kind of knew it was coming, but a lot of people didn't want to believe it and say there's no way they're going to do that because the Hellcat engine has been just an absolute powerhouse for the Dodge brand. The huge reason a lot of people love Dodge is because of that engine. Now, I have a confession to make. I was able to get some inside information about these cars almost two years ago by a friend I'm not going to mention, uh, which you know who you are, so thank you. I appreciate you, who showed me diagrams and all these things about the Hurricane engine. Now the Hurricane engine is Dodge's brand new turbo inline six. It's a three liter, so 2J-ish. And this inline six is going to make a ton of horsepower. There's no doubt about that. It's already been used in the Jeep Wagoneer, the Grand Wagoneer, and also the brand new Ram 1500. And all of these made over 500 horsepower. But there's plenty of other things to complain about, so don't worry, we'll get to that. So in a nutshell, there's the Charger six pack and then there's the Charger Daytona. The Charger Daytona is the EV, as far as I can tell, and then the Charger six pack is is the combustion version. Oh yeah, also they're gonna make the Charger six pack all wheel drive, which is pretty awesome. Maybe it'll stop a, a certain community from doing dumb things in intersections. One can only hope from these low IQ activities. <laughs> oh no, wait, it says that uh, you can actually turn the all wheel drive system off and use it like rear wheel drive. Okay, that's pretty cool. Even though the combustion version of this car is not going to be a V8, the inline six versions, the lowest trim is still going to outperform the outgoing RT version with the 5.7 liter Hemi engine, which honestly, I was pretty much never a fan of that engine. Anyway, I would probably take this inline six over that engine anyway. And the top trim level of the inline six will outdo the previous Scat Pack version, which had the 6.4 liter engine. And the EV version is going to look a smidge different from the combustion engine. They're very similar, but the grill is going to actually have more downforce on the EV version because they can have more air come through that and provide downforce. And it's also going to be sold as a two-door and a four door, which is really fascinating. And I have to admit that the four door version of this car was done really well. The body lines look great and it's really hard to do a four door version and a coupe of the same car and not make it look wonky and stupid and weird. Kind of like how you know when you have a convertible version of a car and it always looks better with the top down and then the moment you put it up, you're like, I should have gotten the hard top. That's I should have done that. I really don't think it's going to get the same hate as when the Mach-E did when it was first unveiled since it is in an SUV. But it is kind of a weird time for EV stuff right now. Toyota is making a big stand against EV stuff right now because they kind of took a step back and said, wait, 
is this all sustainable in the end with EVs when it comes to production and the supply chain and everything else. And I think a lot of companies are starting to realize this. And to be fair, I think EVs do have a place in the automotive industry. The reason I say that is because if you live in an urban area or a downtown area or a city, it makes perfect sense. You do your short commute that only requires a few miles or you know whatever range it is, and then you get to work and you plug that sucker in. It makes complete sense. But for the long distance stuff, the production, the supply chain, I'm still not really on board to be honest. Man, I wonder where all that lithium and cobalt comes from. David, you're part of the problem if you have a smartphone that has lithium and ion. No, this is not the same as as much material in an EV car. You are not convincing me. The interior does look like an evolution of the last car for sure, with the big steering wheel, the swooping dash. It does look Dodge for sure, and thankfully it's not the Dodge interior from the 90s and the early 2000s, so we're good there. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say interior? I meant mission control center. <laughs> okay. Now my favorite thing about what we're talking about today, the reveal video. Reveal video states that Dodge knows where they're going without forgetting about their past, which is always very important because you build brand loyalty and an audience and a consumer by having kind of a consistent vision about your history and what is able to change in the future and still kind of look at the past and say what made us successful. So it starts in 1910 with a super bizarre animation slash green screen effect with a Dodge Charger Daytona just spawning in to 1910. Very back to the future like, it's silver, very DeLorean like. This little kid in front of a green screen is like, wow, what is that? And are you ready for uh, nitpicky David to, to say something? And I feel kind of bad. Something tells me that the navigation system would probably not work in 1910. Uh, there's satellites up in space that coordinate those kind of things. Okay, I'm just being mean, I'm sorry. Stop it. Get some help. Okay, maybe I'm overdoing it. No, wait a minute. How would this car be charged in 1910 with a full charge if there's not available charging systems for this thing? Okay, I'm taking this way too seriously. Okay, I'm sorry. So then they show up in the new Charger and see the Dodge Brothers, a very important set of brothers that created the Dodge brand. And the green screen is so distracting. So distracting to the point that the compositing has people almost doubling up sometimes to try and make up for it. To be clear, green screen is incredibly difficult to be convincing. It's all about your lighting and when I was in film school and experimenting with special effects, I did the same thing and it absolutely never looked good. I'm on your side. And unfortunately, when he starts talking about the inline six, it's blatantly clear that he's staring at a teleprompter. And that is the downside of filming on a green screen or a set with a CGI car in front of you. There's no frame of reference or space. So he's just staring off into the distance reading his script. It's just the way it's shot. That side angle is just not a good idea. They obviously had a vision. Hey, let's go back in time and show the Dodge Brothers this EV and try to get their approval generationally about this EV and convince them that there was electric cars and this is the future, et cetera, et cetera. However, it just gets gnarlier and gnarlier when it comes to the effects kind of degrading in quality through the entire video, which we'll get to. Yes, it's not about the car, but this is fun to talk about for me, okay? So Dodge's CEO comes back in time to tell the Dodge legacy is under attack to fight the system to compete with today's market. He then goes on to say, aren't EVs supposed to be green and save the planet and be politically correct? So that was a f lie. So then my eyebrows raised and said, okay, where is this going? He then said, I don't know, maybe? Why are people building EVs if they don't even know that they're actually green to the earth and then selling them as green to the earth? A anyway, that's another video for another time. <sighs> okay, fair enough. He said that the government and other people and regulators said they couldn't build Hemi engines anymore. Okay, fair point. Maybe they were under a lot of pressure to not build V8s anymore because of how times are changing. But then I will then rebuttal because Ford's 
absolutely crazy CEO, which I mean in the best way and complimentary way possible, Jim Farley, who I recently met, literally said that the Mustang GT is not gonna have the V8 removed literally anytime soon. He refuses to do it. He even said that that's what the Mach-E is for. You build the EV so you can still build the V8 muscle car. Okay, that makes more sense. By the way, Jim Farley is a super interesting guy and I thought about making an entire breakdown about his career because it's completely bonkers and off the rails. Just to give you a crash course of what I learned recently when I met this man is that one, um, I took a ride in the Super Van 4, that crazy EV van that breaks a whole bunch of records. Um, he was giving the ride-alongs to the press, which is even better. He also challenged every other CEO to race him 1v1 on Rust Bro in the GTD on track. Any CEO in any of their race cars, just like, yeah, bro, let's race. <laughs> and at the same time, he gets it. He understands it. I think it's really neat. And that's not me being a Ford stan. It just understandably makes me question, okay, if they have to make the inline six, then why is Ford still able to make the V8 in the Mustang? So that's kind of what I'm seeing in a very subtle, nutshell, speculative manner. And I'm not gonna speculate anymore because speculation is always very dangerous. Okay, back to Dodge's reveal video. Also, the car has what they call an R-wing design. My brain first went to Star Fox because the jets in that game and the spacecraft in that game are called R-wings. They talk about how fast it's going to be, which I don't have any doubts. We all know that EVs are fast cars. They are efficient when it comes to their power plants. They get the job done and they're fast and the Dodge Charger Daytona is gonna make 670 horsepower, which is a lot. But as he's describing this in green screen, in the car, he's constantly doing circles over and over again. I'm sensing a theme here. It's also very distracting that all of the driving in this video is green screen and CGI modeled cars. So you don't even get to see the real car in action, which I think is a huge disservice. If you're trying to sell the general public about how awesome this car is, why don't you have footage of how awesome this car is. Like, show it do a launch, show it do a burnout, show it do the all-wheel drive conversion, doing a all-wheel drive launch, and then flicking a switch, and then showing it do a rear-wheel drive burnout. That would be a Dodge promotion to me. That would be bragging about why it's cool. And yet, it's just him going like this on green screen, pretending to drive over and over in circles. I just don't know who there thought that was a good idea. That's how I see it. And one of the big points that Dodge CEO makes to the Dodge brothers back in time is that a lot of people don't know that electric cars existed before this time. And that during that era of the early automobile, electric cars existed. I think a lot of people know about the steam engine, the electric batteries and the experimentation with those, and of course, oil and gas. But if you paid attention in school, we all know about the industrial revolution. Well, maybe I'm just a nerd and I actually paid attention. That's fair. But oil and gas won because at the time, it was considered the easiest to produce when it came to mass production. And it just had more range. It made more sense at the time. This video just kind of feels like Dodge is so worried about selling this car not even like financially, just philosophically, but that it almost comes off as almost trying too hard in my opinion. They just keep dropping facts to the Dodge brothers themselves, like they're trying to sell their own legacy to them, that this is okay. It's okay that we have an EV muscle car. It's okay that we went in line turbo six. Dude, just own it. It's almost better to say, Hey, listen, we built an EV version of the Dodge Charger that is fast. We're combining the Challenger and Charger names to be under one car. And we built a combustion engine that is fast and probably has a ton of potential. It's a three liter inline six. It has potential. Just own it and say, we did some cool stuff. Times are changing now. We hope you understand. Instead of just trying to oversell this elevator pitch over and over again and showing it down people's throats, including the Dodge brothers themselves. That's my perspective when it comes to the PR of these cars. They look good. In my opinion, they look like good looking muscle cars. I think they look great. I think with what they were trying to do, they look great. So just start with that. They built a car that wasn't an SUV 
and they still gave it the Charger name. That's a win. Things are different now, but you're still gonna have fun in these cars. They're still gonna be fun, and I can't wait to see what the tuning potential of the inline six actually is. I actually think that this would have been more effective believe it or not, as a traditional car unveil. Go up on stage, show the car roll out, rev it a few times like the other one was. I mean, the Dodge Demon unveil, they launched the car on stage. I think it just would have been way more effective this way. Even if it was more expensive, I think it would have been better to see a tangible car in person on stage and talk about it and why they're excited about it. That's just my two cents. And that's all I got to say about that, Lieutenant Dan. So the Dodge Charger Daytona and the Dodge Charger inline six, whatever version. What do you guys think about it? Put it in the comment section below. Honestly, I'm curious about the inline six. I'm not too torn up about the Hellcat that much anymore. It'll be interesting to see what this new generation of Dodge actually does. And on that note, I typically upload on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy, have a wonderful day, goodbye.